What's going on, everyone? It's Barry. This is Firewatch. This is a game that I have had in my backlog for a few years. I was super excited for it. I bought it when it came out. But if you know my backlog, it sat there for a long time. Now I'm going to play it. I'm excited to jump in. This is going to be my first adventure game recorded in ultra wide. So without further ado, let's get in. I don't have a save slot. New game. There we go. I'm not really sure what this game is about. Something about watchtowers and a radio. See you, Julia. She's about your age, late 20s. Laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. So, what, what's your, you know, major? You, you're pretty. Um, I'll go with this one. You slur the word major and it smells like coors. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours? She asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? Man, she got jokes. Was that a burn, you ask? She says, definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks you if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Hmm. Okay. Didn't know it worked like that, but alright. Uh, backpack. Is this my truck? Uh, looks like it. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. What is the story setting us up for? There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it home. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but young-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's a badass. So we'll, she likes the beagle, so we'll go with the beagle. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you're totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him, too. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off the highest desert. What do you think about kids, she asks kids. They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple of idiots. 
That would be great. Sure. Yeah, we'll go with this. In that case, you should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Um, do I have my backpack on? Or did it fly out while we were driving? Do not forget to check in, no fireworks. You are in their country. Learn to live with bears. Warning, Theodore Trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Uh, Thor Thoroughfare is a primitive backcountry trail. The trail may be vaguely long along, what? I can't really read that, it's too blurry. Graphics are nice. 1980. It's a Thursday night. And Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when you when she gets between the seats. I'm gonna ignore her. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man, or you frolic like... Uh, we'll go with this. You look awesome. Why are we hiking? It looks like it's getting dark, too. Two forks. Eight more miles still, jeez. Nineteen eighty-two. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from far away places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. You have fuck dog, Julia yells. <laughs> she gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You comfort you confront the attacker. You scare him away. Yeah, we're gonna beat his face in. Your arm gets cut but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then you walk by from then on you walk by the river. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julie gets offered a job at Yale. Yale's in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. I agree if she commutes back and forth. What? It's 2,000 miles. I guess. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. That sounds terrible. 
Julia sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important for her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. Uh, you say that maybe you guys should talk up to someone about it. Uh, you make macaroni and drink wine. Uh, we'll go with this one. It works. You watch Dallas on TV and sleep together on the couch. You would have a bed, right? Looks like it would be Julia's. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he's getting in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn child little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, her friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. This is really sad. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. You decide to move her into a full-time care. Uh, I don't know. I wonder if these choices have any impact on the actual gameplay. This is a sad story. I haven't really looked into the game. I just thought it looked cool. Her family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day, then every other day. You go out to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. You get the feeling that your wife tells her husband, if you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I will cut off your balls. You slowly decide not to see your old friends that much. This is freaking depressing. 1989. Julia's sister Susan moves to Boulder to be close to her sister. She visits her every day. You go with her from uh, some time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you don't see a therapist. You won't. You always really liked Susan. Months go by, Bucket dies, Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes her a minute to lock on to you. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less, and seeing her less and less makes you forget more, you think. Summer is coming, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. to the lookout tower. Is 
this my job? My job is a park ranger, and I watch for fires. It could be my job. That would kind of explain the game. Left shift to activate the radio. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? <laughs> People what? take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? It's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine. Then can I what, sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. You've killed three ex-husbands. <laughs> You're rebelling against a mom. Nobody back home can stand. Jeez. You're just gonna wait me out on this? Ugh, fine. But I'm gonna take a second here and have a guess about you. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. But nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Huh, is that it? Close. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Welcome to the job. What? <laughs> good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. She can see me? Hey, sorry, guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Whew. Yeah, Jesus, I guess it's what, six? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it, that hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it, do you see it? Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing, um, you, uh, you use this to- Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Out your west-facing window, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Which way is west? I don't have a compass. Fire This window? I need you to confirm. Do you see them? Whoa, that's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is <laughs> two days away. Go down there and set them straight. Uh, like, <laughs> can I write them a ticket? Do I write him a ticket? Easy there, Dirty Harry. Well? Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. What? It's That's... actually that for all of them. Convenient. That's one word for it.
Can I run? M, where am I going? West. Find the rope. Cash box. No, oh, just follow this trail, basically. <laughs> At least the map kind of tells me where I'm at. I've got an overgrown trail here. Yeah, that'll happen. So I'm screwed when it comes to getting past it? Mm-hmm. Screwed until you clear it yourself, yeah. Great. Well, if I come across some tools, I'll add groundskeeping to my ever-increasing list of responsibilities. Great. I have to go around it, I guess. Oh, it's right here. say Ron hey man guy couldn't take it so I locked up his lookout and put some stuff in the box found one of those bars you liked hiking in the park but let's get fucked what <laughs> I have no idea yeah I don't need that Okay, I got the rope. I don't know what the pine cone is for. Uh, but I'll take the granola bar. Can I store stuff? Uh, I, mean, I don't want to drop it. People just stuff these things with old food? That's how you get bears. Where's that? I'm at the cash box. I guess I'm gonna eat it. Do us whoever is setting off fireworks. I can't really, I can kind of hear the fireworks, but I can't see them. It was at the west window, so I guess I just keep going west.
Is this the way? I really don't know. Yep, this must be it. wrong with you my rope snapped coming down the shale slide you didn't break anything did you no I think I'll make it well, be careful for Christ's sake um what so where I'm at. Did I go this way? I think they're down here by that lake. It is a hell of a nice camping spot down here by the lake. I haven't been down there in years, but yeah, Jonesy Lake area is perfect. I'm staring at the big outcropping down here, but I'm not quite sure where to look for our uh, pyrotechnicians. Mm. Maybe keep heading west toward the lake. Those are packs. Beer. They left half a bottle of whiskey. Decent stuff. Drunk pyromaniacs. Fucking great. On the fireworks, they didn't even try to hide them. Uh, well, confiscate them. They left their packs tied up here. Don't fuck with them. The last thing we need is some hikers filing a report about harassment. <laughs> a bunch of empty beer cans. They threw them all over hell. Are you fucking serious? Yeah, sure am. Uh, people are just the worst, aren't they? They're not great, no. Oh shit, ferret or Irish. Just put that in my backpack. Well, they left their clothes out to dry. It looks like uh, two people. Well, uh, what if they're naked? Won't that be exciting? Look, they're obviously still there, so tell them off and then head back. I found a bra. A nudie pyromaniac. Remain professional. Uh, there are, uh, panties. There are what? <laughs> I don't want to say that word again. Why, because you're 12? There's, a. Uh, ooh. Yes? Uh, nothing. Forget it. If you say so. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. I found them in the lake. Skinny dipping? Yeah. Is that a guy over there? Oh boy. Enjoy dealing with that. Hmm. <laughs> Full stereo! Cool it with the fireworks. Please just put it down. We won't light anymore. <laughs> you probably have a tiny dick. Chelsea, it's my boombox. Can we go? L let's just run to the other side of the lake or something. Ew, totally. You're
You're gross. You're just some sad man out in the woods. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, find a way back to Two Forks Lookout. Oh my goodness. Hey, that go okay? It went fine. Hopefully there won't be any more trouble. Good. Thanks for going down there. <laughs> my goodness. Okay. Uh, how do we get back? Follow the river, I guess. Can I climb this? Nope, no climbing. No idea if this is the right way. I wonder if you can get attacked by a bear. Yeah, well, you're not the first boss to be guilty of that. I know, I just, I know I can get a little pushy, you know, putting you on the spot about uh, why you're out here and stuff. It's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll keep that sort of a thing to, uh, to a minimum. Anyway, let me know when you get back to your lookout. I'm trying to get there. Can I climb this? Check the map. I don't know where I'm at. Almost there. I heard some thunder. Yeah, I've got eyes on a storm out to the north. Well, that's bad, right? Because of the lightning? It just means we'll be busy. Hurry home and try not to get hit by lightning. I got hit by lightning when I was nine years old, so I'm safe. It's not going to strike twice and all that. Well, there was an old lookout named Roy Sullivan who got hit by lightning seven times. I don't like the sound of that. Well, that sounds yeah. fantastic. Well, if it makes you feel any better, it wasn't what killed him. What killed him? Suicide. Would you believe? That's not cool. Take a flashlight. What? Ah! I get the sense that not everything in here is useful. In the boxes? Why's that? I don't really know what I'll do with the deer horn. Firstly, they're called antlers. And secondly, stay out here long enough and you'll get creative. Sounds fantastic. What's in this cave down here? In Thunder Canyon? Thunder Canyon? Hey, I didn't name it. But in the cave? I don't know, rocks? NFS tells people not to go too far in there. It's pretty dangerous. So... So, I say, fuck it. You're a grown man, you can go where you want. <laughs> great. Used to go caving with someone back in Colorado. She loved it. Might be great to explore it sometime this summer. Well, that could be fun. Obviously, be very careful. It looks like the path leads through the cave. Back in the cave, huh? Man, I don't need to lose another lookout in there. Uh, another lookout? This cave is gated off. 
It's to stop spelunkers from dying without getting the keys from the Forest Service office first. Makes sense. Although, Debbie says she lost them like three years ago, so... Maybe its mysteries are locked away for good. Ah, damn. Yeah, but maybe you can find another one to get your caving kicks in. Pretty sure we're gonna find that. Home and convenient, though. Aw, sorry, Hank. <laughs> There's some guy out here giving me the creeps. The creeps? Wait, he's looking at you? Is he doing anything else? I... I don't think so. Henry, there's... there's something I... Something someone should have told you about this area. What is it? It's... outside. Come on. The whole thing. And people come and go as they please. It's... it's <laughs> madness. Yeah, yeah, okay. I get it. Look, bumping into someone in the middle of nowhere is part of the fun. I don't know what kind of fun she's into, but that does not sound fun to me. Uh, which way did the... I'm just gonna drop this. Creepy guy was over here. Where did creepy guy go? Pretty sure that this is not a horror game. <laughs> uh, well, that trail isn't closed anymore. Yeah, I took care of the blocked path. Um, it was backbreaking, but, you know, anything for the service. Well, thank you. Anytime. Is this my toilet? So this generator is all the power I've got out here. Yep, it doesn't go through much gas, and, well, you don't have much in the way of electronics, so... What about my hair dryer? Oh, I'm sorry. You might just have to make peace with frizzy locks. I could never. Um, so it's uh, just the outhouse then, in terms of going to the bathroom? You're a man, Henry. You can go wherever you want. <laughs> Damn one, right. And uh, full disclosure, I pee wherever I want as well. Why is my... Uh... What can I do for you? Well, my typewriter is on the ground, outside of my tower. You right? Yeah, look, uh, the wind? No. How the hell... You should get inside. Fuck me. Uh, yeah. Who's here? Creepy guy? Why is it tossed? What kind of asshole? Someone broke in. They what? They just, they wrecked the place. Threw my typewriter out the window. Motherfucker. Holy shit. Um, I'll let the Forest Service know what happened. My fucking sheets are gone. They stole your sheets? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Okay, I put in a call. 
Okay, thanks. Do you have any idea who would have done this? Maybe that guy I saw in the canyon, but I don't know why the fuck he'd want to mess with my stuff. Well, I'll have the rangers keep an eye out for a man hiking on his own and question him if they find him. <sighs> I can't believe someone would do this. I worry about bears and fires, and that's about it. And now I've got to worry about some deranged hiker going after lookouts? Great. Uh, okay, in the morning I'm gonna call my friend Patty, who works the desk down in Cody. They keep a list of everyone who's officially been in and out of the trailhead since... I don't know, forever, and see if we can get a list of names. We won't get much, but at least if anything else happens, we can refer to it and see if anything comes up. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. I need you to feel safe out here. Don't worry about it. Oh, you can protect yourself, huh? I've done it before. Okay, tough guy. 